Television is not the truth. Television is a goddamn amusement park. Television is a circus, a carnival, a traveling troupe of acrobats, storytellers, dancers, singers, jugglers, sideshow freaks, lion tamers, and football players. We're in the boredom killing business. So turn off your television sets, turn them off now, turn them off right now, turn them off and leave them off. Turn them off right in the middle of the sentence I'm speaking to you now. Turn them off! Welcome to Eradicating Programmed Ignorance, brought to you by TLV TV. And today we have another very special show whereby we're going to introduce you to somebody most of you may already know, because he has published some great articles on the Liberty Beacon website, which is, of course, our flagship website. And he's already done several shows. <clears throat> but we like to take a little bit of time and introduce to our entire audience um, these individuals on a personal basis because there may be some things that you don't find out in the shows, some things you don't find out in the articles that they produce, but with a nice discussion between my phenomenal co-host, who is, of course, Rebecca Mahan, who is the <clears throat> TLB Project Media Director and also the host of Rebecca Sounds Reveille. Um, between the two of us, we're going to introduce you to Luca Magno today. So what have you got to say, Rebecca? Well, I'm really excited because Luca Mino has an extensive background in uh, a lot of a lot of things. He's a recognized speaker. He's done conferences in high schools, colleges, universities. He was born in Boston and raised in Geneva, Switzerland. Um, he also in Geneva, Switzerland is in the French language, by the way. And so he's lived in Canada for about the past 20 to uh, 25 to 30 years. Um, and that's where he started his activism. But um, about a little bit after 9-11, when he saw Geronimo's face uh, on a portrait, that's when he really started to question things. And so he has spoke on a lot of topics um, from Canadian and United States history to genocide, ethnic cleansing, um, the concept of race and racism, but there's a whole lot more. And what's really exciting is not only has he been already part of the TLB project, he now has his own show learn to unlearn and so i'd like to welcome him welcome luca mino welcome and it's an honor to be here thank you so much <clears throat> well before you get started a little bit of a preface here okay <clears throat> one of the things that usually unites the individuals that come into the liberty beacon project is <clears throat> that we all have a sense that something is not right or some things are not right or that things need to be changed. And <clears throat> what we try to do is we try to eradicate programmed ignorance, which is the name of the show, because a lot of the issues we suffer, okay, are due to a program that is being stuffed on our throats, whether it's through mainstream media, whether it's through the common core education system, <clears throat> it doesn't matter. <clears throat> We're all exposed to it on a continuous basis. So what brings individuals such as yourself, such as Rebecca, such as myself to even found this project into this level of activism is <clears throat> we realize that something isn't right or some things are not right. And that the most powerful mechanism of change on this planet is we the people. In this country alone, we are 320 million strong. If we unite even a part of our voice, there is nothing we cannot accomplish. So the Liberty Beacon Project is set up and is expanding under the premise that we can awaken a lot of this public that is um, veiled by programmed ignorance. This is why 
special to us, Luca. You're special to us because you have that sense of activism. You're special to us because you see things that other people don't see through that veil of programmed ignorance. And you wish hard to beat the drum as loud as you can to awaken these individuals. So what do you think about that, Luca? <laughs> I, I, I can't do much better than that. I can't beat an intro like that. Um, I got to start with that quote that says, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And that's why I'm among you now, because I dare to say I've done enough homework and, and work in, in the background to, to spread, like Claudio Marti says in the 9-11 uh, Truth Movement, he said to talk about truth, not opinion, because everybody has an opinion, but uh, this is one of the reasons why I'm so proud to be a part of the gang is because we're, you know, it's so hard to find truth and then it's so hard to come out with it once you know it. Well, you just made a sterling point and let me beat that up just a little bit more. Okay. <clears throat> Everybody has an opinion and some of them are sterling, but opinions are fluid. Okay. With a little bit more knowledge, your opinion can shift especially if you've already pushed past that veil of programmed ignorance, okay? That indicates right there that your opinion is in a state of flux. Otherwise, you would never have even attempted to push through that veil of programmed ignorance. But the truth is always the truth. I've stated this before, and please don't anybody take offense by this because it's only meant as a general statement <clears throat> to make a point. If the devil tells me the truth, I will promote it because it is, in fact, the truth. Mm -hmm. The truth is finite. The truth is not, it doesn't fluctuate, okay? The truth is always the truth. And it is the mission of this project to speak the truth. We get very little blowback. You can go to so many different podcast shows, so many different internet television shows, so many different websites, uh, I don't know, pages and groups on Facebook, and you see constant pushback because what they say leaves an avenue for question. Mm -hmm. What we try to do, and if you take a look, and I know you have um, <clears throat> definitely, Rebecca, and I'm sure you have by this point, uh, Luca, taking a look at how few dissenting opinions we get on any TLB forums, whether it's on Twitter, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on our websites. Why? Because we have established a reputation for telling the truth. Now, the truth isn't always pretty, and the truth may piss you the hell off. It might, but that's not the point, okay? It remains the truth. Something I am very fond of saying, and I say it on every single show, so I'm going to get it over with right now, is I never challenge anybody to prove me wrong. I dare you to prove me wrong. And if you can, I've learned something. In the last seven years since we launched this, the very beginning of this project, that has happened one time. And it's not because I'm better than anybody else and it's not because I'm special. It's because we established this network, we established this project on a groundwork of integrity. If we cannot prove what we say, it is incumbent upon us to tell people, this is what I believe, but I cannot prove it. If we do not say that, everybody that follows this project is automatically gonna assume we are telling what we believe to be the truth. And what do you think about that, Rebecca? Well, I think that you could not have uh, said it any better. We have to make sure that the things that we share here are accurate. And so there's a lot of research and a lot of vetting that goes into place in making sure that we do so. And so I will agree with you, not everybody wants to hear it. But sometimes it's a little bit easier when you know that what is being said is accurate to accept that than to find out later on from fake media sources or uh, other avenues that something wasn't correct. And then you have to try and filter through, you know, just what is being said and what is it that's being disseminated? Am I supposed to believe this? Am I not? And people end up shying away from that and a lot of times in this day and age we just don't have the time 
to personally do the research ourselves on everything that's coming across. And so it's really important that when there's a media source like us that the TV show hosts and our writers and our contributors, they have done the research. And so what's being conveyed is accurate. Because it has been established on a groundwork or a bedrock of integrity. Yes. And yes, I do see this in you, Luca. I do. And for anybody who doesn't know, Luca also carries a couple of different um, name tags. Luca is the technical media director for the Liberty Beacon Project. So all of the shows that you see, um, <clears throat> all of the audios that we do, they all go under the loving fingers of Luca. That's right. Absolutely. It's just absolutely incredible. I'm going to so, say, I'm going to hold say, on, hold on. What I, what I want you to do, and you can say whatever you wish, but what I want you to do, lead into this, okay? I would like you to tell people why you joined the Liberty Beacon Project, why you volunteered to become the technical media director, why you wanted to start the show, learn to unlearn, and what you hope to accomplish by it. And do that all in 10 words or less. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I want to start with one word. It's, it's color. My grandmother always said, everybody's a different color, but you get the whole rainbow together afterwards. And I never understood what she meant until I, I matched that with what the original people here on Turtle Island used to say. The, the, the ancestors would always say, you know, your, your spirit is a certain color. You shine a certain color. We want to call it all kinds of fancy words today and get paid for, for research on it. But the Indian used to say that, you know, you're, you're a different color. Say you're yellow. Rebecca's red. Greg is, is purple. Uh, and each color shines on what they're the best at, what they can, what, what they can fine tune. And you choose your battles wisely and you make sure that you're really good at that section of knowledge. When it's needed, people will come to you and you'll be ready and you'll be able to talk about it. Instead of trying to figure out all these subjects out here, half-assed every single one of them, and not really knowing what's going on, not really sure of your resources, not having done the work properly. Uh, so it just so happens that what I love and I'm dedicating my life at uh, can be fit into what the Liberty Beacon so proudly, you know, represents. So I think that that's a little color of the Liberty Beacon, if you will. And now you guys are training me how to install folders, how to prepare this show here, how to put this word perfect document over here. This show is going to become this one. I'm going to do two, three shows of this. Well, Luca, hello, three shows of this one. And you know, so um, I'm, dividing myself into different compartments. Gregory Ford was with us to speak about Abu Ghraib, Copper Green, Depleted Uranium-238, the Gulf War, because he's so good at what he speaks of. For me, it's going to be the Holocaust, the 6 million versus the 100 million souls that perished in the Americas since 1492, Rothschild Zionism, the birth of Israel, David Crowley, Phil Marshall murders, 9-11. All of a sudden, Greg and I start, start connecting. And that well, can be, I would say more you know, than you and Greg, because the amount of research I've done on just about everything you've spoken mm -hmm. of is very, very, very deep. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so let's segue this into what is Learn to Unlearn? First off, why did you choose that title? And second off, what's your goals for Learn to Unlearn? I got Learn to Unlearn from the Star Wars movie uh, when, uh, when Luke is incapable of getting a jet fighter out of the marsh. And he says, I don't believe it. And Yoda says, that is why you fail. And then uh, he looked at him and he kept shaking his head. You have to learn, you have to unlearn what you have learned. And I thought, this is exactly what we have to do. We have to completely, um, I, I, it's the opposite of assimilate. We, we have to take everything that we know and throw it out and start again. And that's, I, that's an avatar too, when they talk about, you know, the cup being, you know, the cup being full, you can't learn anything. The cup has to be empty. 
Um, this is what I mean by learn to unlearn. It's very difficult, and I'm watching my whole half of my brother's side of the family working for Monsanto indirectly, working for J.P. Morgan indirectly, doing their lives. You know, we can't be seen on, on Facebook, you know, with, with, with the stuff that you're doing. You know, um, and so it's causing division everywhere. But my family as well. It's but I, I, I want to take, okay, one thing you said, and I want to modify it a little bit, okay? <clears throat> the cup should never be emptied, okay? Do you have to get rid of a lot of the weight, okay, of the information you've been fed? Yes, you do. But how do you know, okay, just how bad? Or how do you know how big the lie was mm -hmm. if you don't have enough retention to draw a comparison between what you've been told and what the truth is. How do you teach someone, how do you pull them past that veil of programmed ignorance if you're not aware of why they think what they think or how they fell into that trap of programmed exactly. ignorance? Exactly. So yes. <clears throat> emptying the cup is something you should never do. Draining it off of a lot of the crap that's in it, oh, hell yes. But never get rid of everything that stuffed you behind that veil of programmed ignorance because then you have no point of comparison. You have no empathy with those you wish to teach. Mm. Do you agree? I, I think what, what they mean is ego. It's shedding of the ego. The more ego you shed, of course, you're always going to have some left, yes. but You need some ego. Of course, but... We know what type we're talking about, you know, and, and there are m most people you can work with, but there are people that you just cannot waste your time with. There's people that you have to just wish well, turn around and walk. Um, because if you don't, you can't convert people. So we're hoping that everybody's at the same level that we, we try to be, you know. Rebecca, you do your shows, and they're, they're so perfectly situated with what Roger does when he does his. And I'm hoping that mine can sort of make the puzzle e even even better. You know, Lorena writes the world, does her thing. You know, it, everybody's got their little compartments in, in, in this web. And, and that's what I'm hoping to, to honor with these shows. Talking a lot about the matriarchal society, why it's polar opposite from what we're, we're living today. Uh, I want to talk about the residential schools, the effort from church and state to abolish the rights of women, you know, Catholic Church builds a manual for women in the 60s, and this is how we want you to live. The suppression of women, it's really interesting stuff. Um, I, mean, and I think that you have a lot of information that you're going to be able to pass along. And Roger, going back to what you said, I think it's important that we maintain some of the information because what's being disseminated, there is some truth in it, or it wouldn't be believable. It's differentiating what is completely transparent and what is the not best lies are built on the foundation of truth. I apologize for interrupting. I had to say that. Please. There continue, you go. Rebecca. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much it. I mean, we just have to be able to differentiate and really go through what is the true part of the matter that's being shared and what isn't and then bring forth what is and it's very very time consuming and one topic alone can take hours upon hours of research and what makes it great when you have a specialty or a passion that you have you already have the foundation of truth built so when something comes along you can disseminate it a lot quicker and know where to pull the information from Whereas an average person who may never have started research won't have that same type of uh, ability to do. You just brought up another sterling point, and you do this all the time, um, <clears throat> which is why I love having you as a co-host. <clears throat> there is, there are so many people in this project who have great specialties. Rebecca, you do. Um, <clears throat> Luca, you do. Lorena does. Mm -hmm. um, Alan does. Um, Tony Olson does. Okay. <clears throat> These are people, um, even um, Ken Lareeb does. These are people who have a, they focused on a certain aspect and they really, really dug out as much information as they can. <clears throat> I am the founder of this project and I am supposed to be the leader of this project. 
It is incumbent upon me not to be an expert in any of your fields, but to know enough about what all of you are talking about to be able to discuss it intelligently. So another thing I say on every single show I ever do, and I'll get it out of the way right now, is <clears throat> I am an expert at nothing but I know enough about anything to have an intelligent conversation about everything. This is incumbent upon me to do the best interface with you, Luca, to do the best interface with you, Rebecca, to do the best interface with Tony Olson, and so on and so forth. It is not my job to be the expert at anything but building the Liberty Beacon Project. I count on each and every one of you and you do such a superlative job as being the experts on what you wish to talk about. And I couldn't be prouder of a group of people than I am today. And I spent my entire life leading teams. And some of them were global teams. And most people know that I led in a global emergency response team for the DOD for 20 years. Anywhere on the planet, there was a crisis. I put a team together and we went and solved the crisis. So again, I could not be the expert on everything. That's why I had a team. It was my job to coordinate the functionality of their expertise and make it as effective as possible. But without the experts, I'm nothing. And as a part of the team already, but with a new component, Luca, we do welcome you to this aspect. Um, I think thanks are in order, if I can be brief. Um, I just wanted to say a big thank you to the Liberty Beacon for allowing originality without censorship. You spoke about integrity. Um, I think thanks are in order also from an ambitious, very knowledgeable and well-known Ariana Love who showed me the ropes and who, who it thanks to that I am on, on the honor roll. Um, and everyone, I'm, I'm in touch through you, Rebecca, and it's been quite a ride with Roger as well. A short one, but a really good one. And um, this, is, this is, you know, it's the fruit of probably 25 to 30 years worth of research for me. And it's an honor to see the, the pieces fit so perfectly. You know, in a scary fashion, but it has to be, it has to be addressed, you know? We will be a team for all of the foreseeable future. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you something. I'm that bad booger you can't shake off your finger, okay? Mm -hmm. It's very, very hard to get rid of me once I realize the potential you have, once Rebecca realizes the potential you have, because in fact, she is our media director. And had Rebecca decided that you were not somebody who could fit in well with this team, it wouldn't have happened. It's not my job to override or overstep what my directors feel is in the best interest of this project. Just like I'm not going to tell you how to edit a video. I'm not going to tell you. So <clears throat> we've got a couple of minutes left, very, very few. So any parting shots, Luca? Very quickly. Because of the matriarchal nature of my shows in general, uh, we're talking about uh, the sacred feminine, we're going to be talking about Mother Earth, we're going to be talking about life givers, we're going to be talking about the way women were revered and respected as, you know, as they're not now and why. Because we're talking about the sacred feminine a lot, I'm going to be bringing up some pretty interesting subjects that uh, have to do with men and sensitizing men as well. Um, I.e. to one of the shows coming up soon will be on uh, rape and sexual assault. And everybody's probably going to think, yeah, there's the guy, you know, interviewing women and he's never had anything like that happen to him. Well, this is going to be one of my shows to explain what has happened to me at 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And I have uh, uh, someone I'm interviewing that's going to have the same thing happen to her in 1984. And we have a male and a female perspective, which is what we want. Perfectly balanced, the two of them. Things like that that are going to make life better and probably more interesting as we go along. Roger? I, 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 could, I, couldn't, I really couldn't agree more. Um, Rebecca will be first to tell you because we've had very in-depth uh, uh, conversations about this. Um, <clears throat> I have, again, put together many teams, whether it was as a department for a company, whether it was an emergency response team, whether it was for my own business. And I must tell you, 
Okay. And Rebecca will smile because again, I don't lie. I, I, when I repeat things, they're always the same, which is the first sign of truth. Okay. Mm -hmm. They've always been a minimum of 60% female, every leadership team I have ever built. And mm -hmm. so it will remain. And there is a reason for that. So one of these days, you and I will do a show together and we will talk about the matriarchal society. And you might be surprised at some of the concepts I can help. Mm. Or I can help deliver to your audience. But Rebecca, what's your wrap up? I want to just thank you for all that you have done so far with the Liberty Beacon. And I also want to wish you much success in your own show. I think that you're going to position some topics that are ones that people may shy away from into a completely different perspective that will be helpful, eye-opening, and allowing people to move forward. So I'm wishing you much success, Luca. I thank you. It should be fun. Well, <clears throat> I think it's going to be fun. I also think it's going to be educational, and I think it's necessary. And if you put the three things together, if you're teaching somebody, okay, if you're enjoying what you're doing and you're addressing something that must be addressed, then you have the perfect combination. So for everybody listening, this has been the introduction to Luca and his new show, Learn to Unlearn, on eradicating programmed ignorance brought to you by TLBTV. Thank you for watching and have a great evening.